Hello Internet, Jojo here, and today we are going to calculate one of the most iconic feats in One Piece. We are going to look at when Kaido, one of the four emperors, Jason borned himself off a 10,000 meter high sky island and ended up wily coyote in the ground when he landed. That is, if you can actually call that a landing. I guess it's best described as falling with style. Now, on the surface, this particular feat is really simple. You see, in the real world where most of us live, there is a point where a person reaches a speed where they cannot fall any faster. This is called the person's terminal velocity. Normally an impact at this speed really wouldn't be able to produce anything impressive for any fictional character who was considered superhuman or even peak human like Batman. However, this feat is obviously not that simple, as instead of just going splat, when Kaido lands, it goes boom. He impacts the ground so hard that a dust cloud shoots up and covers the sky. So let's forget gravity and calculate how much power Kaido actually hit the ground with. First things first, we need to get a grip on this dust cloud. In order to calculate the energy required to move this dust cloud, we are going to look at its kinetic energy. This island that Kaido lands on seems to be covered with cone-shaped pine trees. Now, of the many, many types of pine trees in the world, the most common pine that grows on an island and looks like this is the Norfolk Island Pine. The Norfolk Pine grows at a standard height of about 100 feet or 30 meters tall. Taking that and applying it to the standard size tree in this panel, and we can find this dust cloud is about 512 meters tall. Now, going by the anime, it takes about 1 second for the dust cloud to reach this height, putting it at about 1147 miles per hour or just under Mach 1.5. As to the mass of the dust clouds, and thus the mass moved, we have to look at how much rock Kaido displaced when he hit the ground like a cartoon canine. Kaido stands at about 8.3 when compared to Jack, and is about 50 years old. This would give him an ideal weight of around 1,722 kilograms. Though, to be fair, he probably is a bit heavier given his... robust... bust. Honestly, people complain about the One Piece girl's assets being big, but no one complains about when Kaido would dominate a tier list. Anyways, given that height, weight, and age, he should have a surface area of 22.47 meters squared, and a frontal surface area, as only one side of him was giving the ground a massage, of 11.239 meters squared. Because this hole is around Kaido's height, as he had to lift himself out and couldn't just stand up, it must be at minimum 8.3 meters deep. This gives this hole a volume of 93 cubic meters. This is the mass that got launched into the air. Considering that sandstone, a very common rock found on islands, has a density of 2,000 kilograms per cubic meter, we find the dust cloud must consist of a dustified 186,573 kilograms. So, with 186,000 kilograms being launched at Mach 1.5, we get a kinetic energy of 24 trillion 529 billion joules. This is the equivalent energy of 24.5 gigajoules and is enough energy to vaporize about 8 people entirely. But that's not all there is here. We must also remember that Kaido's fall also pulverized every one of those 93 cubic meters of sandstone as well. While the strength of sandstone tends to vary wildly, averaging its highest and lowest compression strength, we find that Kaido's fall must be producing about 20,986 psi. Taking the front of Kaido's body and applying this to it, we discover that he must have impacted with exactly 365,615,234 pounds of force. Displacing this force by his 8.3 meter height, and we get an energy of 13 gigajoules of power. This brings our total energy produced by this fall to about 38 gigajoules, or perhaps best quantified as just over 9 tons of TNT. Now, 9 tons of TNT is not even that impressive as, even as early as the Orangetown arc, Zoro was taking hits like this from Buggy's cannon. However, it is more impressive than if Kaido just hit the ground at normal gravity as he would be striking the earth with about 1,725,462 joules or about 1 22,000th of the energy we just calculated. For Kaido to strike the ground with 9 tons of TNT, he would need to be falling at about 14,865 miles per hour or about 19.37 times the speed of sound. 
Comparing this to his terminal velocity under normal gravity, nearly exactly 100 miles per hour, we discover that the One Piece planet must have a gravity 148 times out of Earth. Of course, there is another method of calculating his impact force, a much simpler method. You could actually count to see how long he fell for. Going by the anime, it takes him 19.95 seconds to fall 10,000 meters, putting him at about 1,121 miles per hour. This is also 11.21 times faster than his terminal velocity at normal gravity. So, as you can see, there is a lot of conflicting data. The issue is that while these calculations might be mathematically correct, using this gravity in any other calculation like planet busting or island lifting would be misguided at best. This is because without any sort of blatant confirmation that gravity of this planet is this strong, or even at least stronger than normal, it would be an unreasonable assumption to make. Using this gravity would be unreasonable because of the effect that gravity can have on many other calculations. Its effect is far reaching, nuanced, and can even cause calculations to become volatile. So because of that, we have to treat it very carefully. Here's an example of what I mean by volatile. Just doubling Earth's gravity would increase the energy to destroy the planet by four times. And the One Piece planet could have gravity upwards of 148 times. This would cause catastrophic levels of assumption to creep in. Not to mention that if you use this type of planetary calculation for one franchise, then you have to do it for every other franchise as well. At that point, it becomes an absurd, whose planet's gravity is stronger argument. Are you starting to see why calculating a planet's gravity is best left alone unless it is explicitly stated? Cool. Also, just because a planet is larger does not mean it has a stronger surface gravity than any other planet. That said, this still leaves us with an issue. If we are to assume that the One Piece planet has a normal Earth gravity, then how did this happen? Well, honestly, heck if I know. Maybe the air of the planet is really thin, meaning less drag. Maybe Kaido weighs the same in his human form as he does in his dragon form, making him way heavier than we thought and thus increasing his terminal velocity dramatically. Or maybe he has some way to propel himself. After all, he probably knows how to use the skywalk technique. The truth to the exact physics of what's going on here is probably somewhere in the middle of this mess, but the energy he struck the Earth with is what he hit the Earth with. Outside of the impact, whatever logic you're going to use breaks down and makes no sense within a few minutes. Honestly, this might be the first feat that I declare unreasonable as any attempt to make it reasonable makes everything else unreasonable. And lastly, about the headache that Kaido got. Theoretically, you could do some fancy math to come up with a technically reasonable number for Kaido's max durability. However, that would never really work as we've seen him take hits from Luffy, who has long surpassed the 9 tons of TNT by millions of times. I think it's more likely the fall sobered him up and he was just hungover from his constant drinking. So let that be a lesson to you, don't drink and skydive. That said guys, thanks for watching, see you next time, remember to stay spectacular, Jojo, out.